Transportation Utopia, Reducing Our Carbon Footprint, presented by the 6th, 7th, and 8th graders of From the Heart Christian School. Wow, there are 210 students who go to our school, and each student is driven to and picked up from, a, from school by a loved one who drives a car. If we average at least two, two students per car, then that would be 105 cars traveling to the school three days a week. I wonder if the student body could reduce its CO2 footprint by implementing alternative modes of transportation to school. Currently, the average round trip distance a family travels to school is 36 miles. If 105 cars travel 36 miles each day, the total of 3,780 miles traveled in one day. 11,340 miles traveled in one week and 45,000 Transportation Utopia is when everyone walks or rides bike to school. It would be great because of the advantages. One, the student body would be in great shape. Two, there is no CO2 emission. Transportation Utopia sounds nice, but that is not realistic for a school, so it's considered other alternative modes of transportation. She's right. Walking and biking is Transportation Utopia because cars put out a lot of exhaust, which pollutes the air and riding your bike uses nothing but your own muscle power. Biking and walking burns calories and strengthen the muscle in your legs. These activities can lower your blood pressure, increase cardiovascular fitness, reduce excess body fat, and so much more. Walking and biking saves money on gas and is less wear and tear on your car. Bikes need maintenance too, but they are much smaller, simpler machines. Plus, you can probably learn to do most of the maintenance yourself. Walking and biking are transportation utopia, but there are some disadvantages, like bikes are not as fast as cars, and walking is not as fast as biking or riding a car. There is no shelter in the event of inclement weather, there are dangerous drivers, road hazards, lack of cycle lanes and trails, and limited travel routes. So transportation utopia is ideal, but it is not realistic for our student body. Like Zakaya said, let's think of some other ways for transportation. Many students live in the same area, which means carpooling or ride sharing could be an option for some families. In my area, there are four families that travel to school three days a week in separate cars. What if ride sharing or carpooling was an option? Well, what is ride sharing and carpooling? According to rideshare.org, a carpool is simple. 
It's an arrangement between two or more people to make a regular journey in a single car, typically with each person taking turns to drive the others. However, other carpools have just one driver who drives each commute. Carpooling and ride sharing would allow three less cars traveling to the school. So what are the benefits? One, parents would save money on gas. There would be reduced wear and tear on their cars. And CO2 emissions would be reduced because three less cars would be traveling to the school. So this results in 133,164 grams of CO2 not being released into the atmosphere. There are students who could travel to the school by public transportation. The bus stop is in front of the school and the bus's route goes through the public rail system. The public bus system has a fleet of hybrid electric, clean diesel, and compressed natural gas vehicles. The students using public transit would reduce their CO2 footprint because each student on the bus means one less car on the road. The rail system is also an option because the bus travels to the train and to the school. The advantages of the metro rail system are that they are most efficient in terms of energy consumption and they are eco-friendly and cause no air pollution and less sound pollution. If we could convince our school administrators, parents, and students to consider alternative transportation options, we will be able to reduce the amount of CO2 released into the atmosphere, save money, and improve the planet. So let's go FDHCS Garrett Morgan competition team. Now that we have collected our data, let's prepare a proposal for our carpooling network. We can also organize a sustainable transportation event in which we promote alternative transportation like public transportation and the Metro rail system. In the future, we can conduct research and perform calculations to determine if it will be advantageous for the school to have a school bus system, but that is for next year. From our hearts to your heart, thank you for viewing our presentation. We are greatly appreciative of the opportunity we have had to learn about sustainable transportation and how important it is in the preservation of our planet. We are just getting started in our effort to reduce our school's carbon footprint and are looking forward to next year's competition. Again, thank you.